we uh, perceive several Hindu gods and goddesses and other Puranic characters only through the form and color which uh, he painted. He had an extraordinary ability to visualize scriptures and present scenes and individuals realistically to perfection. Uh, I will be presenting and discussing a few of his paintings, uh, which are not in any chronological order, but enough to give you a flavor. Uh, do you see the second slide, Shibu, now? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, our story today is set during the uh, period of undivided India and in one of the southernmost uh, princely states, uh, Travancore, which is uh, part of the modern day Kerala, as you all know. And uh, in those days, Kerala was even more distinctly split into three geographies, the Malabar up north, the Cochin in the central, and Travancore or Vanchinad or Vanchibhumi as it was then called, named after the tutelary deity, Lord Vanchinathan, uh, a, shame, a name of Shiva. And it was a kingdom rarely at war, preferring literature and arts than the sword and the musket. It was a very progressive state. They had, as you can see, their own national anthem, which was called Vanchi Samangalam, which I think if you get an opportunity, you should listen to. Uh, their own postal service, their own flag, their own coat of arms, etc., with its capital at uh, Padmanabhapuram, which is about 60 kilometers uh, uh, southeast of uh, uh, Trivandrum in the current uh, day Kanyakumari district. The famous palace there, as you probably know, uh, is one of the best examples of traditional uh, Kerala architecture. The Travancore royal family. Uh, hardly fought any wars, and they were great patrons of the arts. So the Kilimanur clan, uh, which consisted of uh, what you call the Samantha Shaktriyas, who had descended from the rulers of Baipur, which is up north in Koriko, this clan actually served as the valorous defenders of the Travancore royal family and the kingdom. And in return, the royal family, uh, they honored this uh, uh, Kiliman or clan as Koil Tamburans for their service. And they were also the only clan permitted to marry within the Travancore royal family. And because of the then existing uh, rigid uh, matrilineal social system, uh, the wife, uh, you know, continued to remain in her mother's home and not in the husband's wife, uh, husband's uh, home. Uh, Raja Ravi Verma's parents are an example of such a union and born on 29th April 1848, he continued to live in his mother's home in uh, Kilimanur, uh, as the name suggests, uh, it's a place even now uh, well known for the Kili and the Man or the parrot and the deer. And there was a rich tradition of arts and musical lean that ran through the family. His uncle, Raja Raja Varma, was an accomplished uh, Tanjore style painter. His father, Irumavil Nilakandan Bhattaripad, was an accomplished uh, Sanskrit scholar. And his mother, Umabai Tamburati, was the first to convert the epic story of Parvati Swayambaram into a Tullal dance, which is a very distinct uh, Kerala dance form. Although Travancore was culturally isolated from the rest of India and the world, Raja Ravi Verma was the earliest known Indian artist to have applied the Western style of realism through oil colors on canvas to Indian themes. But before we go into it, it's interesting to spend a moment on how paintings were done before his time. The painting medium in those days in Kerala was a unique mix of vegetables and mineral dyes and stones and seeds like, you know, Kunni Kuru and Manjadi Kuru, which many of you may have seen, mixed with olive oil and uh, egg white. Uh, for example, red color was made by powdering stones like uh, chai and maniola mixed with other organic materials 
uh, which I mentioned uh, earlier. Art in Kerala at that time was the tradition of mural paintings derived from Ajanta and Sitanavasal assimilated in the 8th century AD. This was translated into indigenous talent as local idioms on walls and hence it was called Chumar Chitram or Chuvar Chitram. They were endlessly repetitive and since they were vegetable based, they wouldn't last long. Uh, one can actually see remnants of this on the walls of the famous Guruvayur temple even now. The introduction of oil on canvas painting occurred when the Maratha court of Tanjore was dissolved and many of the visual and performance artists from there migrated to be patronized by the Travancore royalty. And one such artist was a gentleman called Ramaswamy Naidu from Madurai, who was an accomplished oil on canvas painter. But he guarded his skills so much that he refused to teach Raja Ravi Verma, who as a young boy had already started exhibiting his drawing and painting skills. Ravi Verma's tryst with oil on canvas occurred through the visit of a Danish painter called Theodore Jensen, who came to the royal court commissioned by the then king Ayulyam Thirunal. He too was not willing to teach Raja Ravi Verma, but he reluctantly agreed for Ravi Verma to watch him while painting. Ravi Verma quickly realized that the painter was not able to accurately reflect the features of an Indian face structure and the jewelry. You can actually notice this on the painting on the left, which the Danish painter did. But by simply watching him paint, he brought out a mesmerizing paint of the Queen Lakshmi Bai then, which, is, uh, which you can see a part of it on the right, which caught everybody's attention. He was able to very authentically depict the grace and looks of an Indian woman. To highlight Ravi Verma's observation skills and eye for perfection, I wish to show you this painting of the Maharaja of Bhavnagar rendered in 1881. And in the of the royal necklace from the painting alongside a photograph of a real necklace. The details in the painting are so accurate that it is impossible to say which is a painting and which is a photograph. Another one to highlight the same is the painting of the Queen of Pudukotai, her Highness Janaki Subama Bhai in her uh, resplendent uh, jewelry. You can see the Nakshi, the Polki diamond, the Gutta Pulasu necklace, the so-called Bullaku and the Mukuti and so on. So he had a extreme ability to observe and paint very, very accurately. This is a painting of the then Prince uh, Pudukotai, uh, Martanda Tondaiman, when he was a young boy, which captures the facial features and expression of a young prince so realistically. Now, I presented these paintings only to establish his extraordinary observation and reproduction skills. Now, going back to his life story, around 1870, Ravi Verma made up his mind to become a professional artist and give up his rights to be a ruler. This was quite unprecedented in the Travancore royal lineage. In fact, in any royal history, it is hard to find a, a princely person who became a painter. And to decide and commit himself as a career artist, he undertook a pilgrimage to the famous Mukambika temple and spent about 41 days there. And on his return at Calicut, he received his first paid commission for a painting, which is a family portrait of the Kirake Palat Krishna Menon family. This is probably, in my opinion, the first professional portrait painting of an Indian family. And you can see the 
the expressions on the members of the family, they all look very stern, no smile on their face. I have compared it with another painting of a typical European family. One can recognize the similarities in the format of the personalities. For example, the youngest child is on the lap of the mother and the eldest standing behind. Ravi Verma showed a keen interest in studying European realism artists. Although he studied them intensely, his objective was to reflect the rich Indian local ethos and culture to its minutest details. Let's look at some comparisons to see how he applied his observations and learnings. This painting on the right, titled, There Comes Papa. Shibu, are you able to see the screen now? I'm just once again. Yes, we can, we can, we can. Don't worry, we'll let you know if there's a problem. All right. It's one of the many masterpieces of Ravi Verma, executed in 1893. You can see that the content is similar to the one on the left by the French artist, Georges Logy, titled, Mother Holding a Child. But the similarity ends there. Ravi Verma added a rather unique element to this painting. The mother, unlike the European one, can be seen pointing out at another person not in the painting, but clearly implied. This implied element of a character left to the imagination of the observer was often used by Ravi Verma in his paintings. For example, if you look at the Shakuntala series. He actually used his eldest daughter, Mahaprabha, holding her son, Martanda Varma, as the model. This was one of the 10 paintings which was sent to the World Columbian Exhibition at Chicago in 1893, which incidentally was the first international exhibition in the recorded history of the world. The original painting did not have a dog because over a century and a half ago, dogs were seldom pets in Indian homes, especially in Kerala, since they were not considered clean. However, he decided to add the dog to attract European uh, audiences, a very subtle thinking. All the 10 entries of Raja Ravi Verma were accepted and he received two medals, which was widely covered in the American press then. And mind you, Raja Ravi Verma never traveled abroad his entire life. Uh, there were cultural restrictions on sea voyage during uh, his era, and higher caste people did not have sanction to cross what was then called the Kalapani in those days. But he voraciously subscribed and read many European and continental art magazines. Next, I would like to quickly show you two paintings. The first one is a Renaissance painting where the lady can be seen on the left playing the lute. And the one on the right, which is uh, the Veena player by Raja Ravi Verma. Now this brings about a very important aspect of Indian music vis-a-vis -vis European music. Classical European music instruments invariably require to be played only by looking at musical notes while Indian music is largely left to the creative imagination and improvisation of the player with no musical notes to refer to during a live performance. Now, what you see on the right is another one of uh, Raja Ravi Verma's masterpieces called Hamsa Damayanti which now adorns the walls of the Sri Chitra Art Gallery in Tiruvannamdapuram. Drawing from the painting of the French artist Gustave Baulanga, the importance of depicting gait, he has so beautifully captured the moment in all its splendor. Uh, most of us know the story of how King Nala sends a golden swan as an emissary to sing his praise to the curious uh, Damayanti it's an excellent setting and a scene for an artist. I will now also quickly move 
to two more paintings without spending much time. This one compares a European mother seeking arms with uh, Ravi Verma's gypsies in the Indian context, again, adoring the walls of the Sri Chitra Art Gallery. To a keen observer, the forlorn look on the, uh, uh, of the young girl in the foreground is actually simply riveting. You've got to see it in live uh, in the art gallery to understand what I'm saying. Uh, and this is the flower girl in a European setting with the Maharashtrian lady in the Indian context. Uh, and with this, I complete the section on concept and context. Moving on, his first recognition came in 1873 at the uh, Madras Fine Arts Exhibition with his painting of the Nair lady that you see there on the left. Uh, it's a series of paintings and this was the one that was displayed. And interestingly, he competed with the same Ramasamy Naidu who refused to teach him as a young boy. And he won the gold medal from the then governor of, my, uh, of Madras, uh, Lord Buckingham. And the governor was so impressed with Ravi Verma's art that he commissioned him to paint a life-size portrait of his in 1878. After completion, the governor had this to say, and I quote, I am struck with the rapidity of Ravi Verma's work. Even with 18 settings with an eminent continental artist, he had not produced half so faithfully a likeness to me as Raja Ravi Verma. This painting is currently displayed at the Raj Bhavan in Uti. And uh, the uh, Nair lady painting, which you see on the left, incidentally also won the first prize at the Vienna at Art Gallery in the same year, which is 1873. His 1876 entry at the Madras show titled Shakuntala Patralekan brought him uh, broader recognition. It was the first time in Indian art, a theme from a literary source, and in this case, uh, Kalidasa's Shakuntalam was selected for painting. Interestingly, one Sir Monier Williams, who was then the professor of Sanskrit at the Oxford University, sought Raja Ravi Verma's permission to reproduce this as the frontispiece of his English translation of the Shakuntalam. This piece titled King Aja's Lament, which is now in a private collection, brought out a new discovery. Decades after dust and grime required the painting to be restored, and during the restoration process, they noticed that there was a small teardrop on the left eye, which was not visible earlier, and it depicted the lament of the king much more forcefully. Now, this is a fairly long slide that I need to spend some time on. Uh, the centerpiece that you see here is the Sita Bhumi Pravesham, a painting that played a very important role in Ravi Verma's fame, transcending the South besides playing a part in the incidents in his life. It also created a strong bonding with a certain Sir Madhav Rao, who subsequently became the Divan of Baroda, and at that time was the English tutor to the King of Travancore. Raja Ravi Verma had actually painted the Sita Bhu Pravesham in 1880 as a gift to the King Ayilyam Tirunal, who succeeded Maharaja Vishakam Tirunal. But later on, the king's relation with Raja Ravi Verma strained, and uh, Ravi Verma left the Travancore court for good as the king wound up his uh, studio in the palace. And at that time, Lord Buckingham from Madras visited Travancore, and since he knew Raja Ravi Verma, as I told you earlier, he had commissioned him to paint his own painting. He was uh, very keen on visiting Ravi Verma's studio and asked the king uh, 
that I would like to visit and I would want to meet him. Uh, because of this strange relationship, the king was hesitant and instead he preferred to show a lot of uh, paintings with Ravi Verma had done. But uh, Lord Buckingham insisted on meeting him. So Ravi Verma was summoned and just picturize this, the governor walks down to receive him at the door because he had such a high regard. And Ravi Verma did not sit as he cannot sit in front of the ruler as per court etiquette. He stood and so did the governor because the governor said, I cannot sit in front of such a famous artist that I like. And because the governor couldn't sit, the king also did not sit because he couldn't sit in front of the governor of the presidency at that time. And this created a bit of a tension and the king was a little more infuriated because he had to stand alongside uh, Ravi Verma. And uh, with that, the relationship strained so badly that Ravi Verma left Trivandrum. Immediately after this, Sir Madhavara, who was by then uh, the Divan of, Bahadu, uh, Divan of uh, Baroda, visits and he was aware of the above incidents and the strained relationship with the king. He was actually actually uh, keen on acquiring uh, Ravi Verma painting for his uh, young master back in Baroda, Gaikwad. And the king very, very quickly sells him the Sita Bhu Pravesham. And when Sita Bhu Pravesham sets its foot in Baroda, it creates a sensation in Baroda. And uh, Sir Madhavara, on his own, took his liberty to send one of the painting, which was that... Uh, the uh, Nair Lady, uh, one of the series of that painting, to one of the exhibitions in uh, Pune at that time. And that painting won a gold medal. And the gold medal was delivered by the then governor of Bombay, Sir Ferguson. And he wanted to buy that painting. And uh, when it was told that the Nair Lady painting belonged to Sir Madhavarao, uh, he wanted a copy of it and it was arranged. So Baroda and Pune helped to spread Ravi Verma's fame, transcend the South. And when Sayaji Rao ascended the throne as the Gaikwad of Baroda in 1881, he actually invited Raja Ravi Verma to be a guest of the state. He was received with full honors and given a mansion to live. He painted the Baroda royal family and stayed there for four months. There was an outpouring of commission requests waiting for him. And on his way back, he stayed in Bombay and Sir Madhava Rao then arranged a meeting between him and the King Ayalyam Tirunal to catch up. But unfortunately, the King was still quite rigid. And when he sees the uh, Raja Ravi Verma, he asks him, have you forgotten your state? And uh, uh, Raja Ravi Verma replies, uh, well, I will come when the time comes. And the King is very enraged. And he takes steps to actually stop his uh, honorarium and he plans to excommunicate him from Travancore. Then Sir Madhavara intervenes and he averted this grave catastrophe which may have disrupted the artist's life. Uh, Ravi Verma then began traveling across India with his brother. Different cultural experiences enriched his impressions. He interacted with the British and painted with their portraits. Uh, although he hailed from an orthodox background, he accepted other faiths and religion. For the first time, he visited a church in Pondicherry in 1894 and he, and he was struck by the uh, solemnity. He felt humbled and exalted by the spirit of worship when he visits the Moti Masjid in Agra. Although he formally studied only Malayalam and Sanskrit, travels made him conversant in Tamil, Hindi, Gujarati, and Marathi. And he cultivated a number of elite friends like uh, Divan Bahadur, Raghunath Rao, who was then a very famous civil servant, and Dr. Furnell, who was a very famous physician and uh, orientalist. Uh, This uh, painting is one of the most amazing works of uh, uh, Ravi Verma, which speaks of a very skillful technique pertaining to the treatment of light and shade in drawing and painting, 
through color orchestration, which is referred to as uh, chiaroscuro. Now observe the excellence of shading on the face of the lady and the glow of the moon and its reflection on the water, which normally we take for granted in any painting. This technique of his enabled several followers in India of which this painting titled The Glow of Hope rendered by another famous Indian painter, S.L. Haldankar. It is so famous that it is often attributed to Raja Ravi Varma, which is incorrect. Incidentally, the woman in this painting who is holding the lamp is uh, Geeta Haldankar, who is the daughter of the artist when she was 12 years. She recently, in October 2018, passed away at the ripe, the ripe age of uh, 102 in Kolhapur. This painting can be seen at the Jayachamarajinda Art Gallery in Mysore. Interestingly, Mr. Haldankar sold it to the gallery for 300 rupees and a buyer from France some years ago offered eight crores, but thankfully the gallery refused to not part with it. Now by 1940, Nationalist art was replaced by modern trends like Cubism and Impressionism, which was an antithesis of uh, realism. Disapproval of uh, Ravi Varma's style grew. His uh, stature was actually attributed to his uh, royal patronage. The only place his art could be viewed was the Sri Chitra Art Gallery in uh, Trivandrum. And Kerala was not willing to part with his paintings. Uh, an effort was publicly, uh, an effort was uh, made to publicly hold an exhibition of paintings in 1993 at the National Museum in Delhi, uh, which was titled uh, Ravi Verma New Perspectives. And it was inaugurated by the then Prime Minister, Mr. Narasim Rao, which is when actually there was a resurgence and Ravi Verma's prominence was renewed and the value of his paintings shot up prices soared, and in fact, quite a few fakes started uh, uh, originating. The strongest dissenting voice for the Ravi Verma style of painting actually came from none other than M.F. Hussein, who called him a calendar artist. The reason I am showing this is because the same M.F. Hussein who criticized him actually adopted almost the same storyline of Shakuntala and uh, uh, Menaka and uh, Vishwamitra uh, and uh, did one of his paintings in the Madhuri and Menaka series. Here is a rendition by another great Indian artist, Jamini Roy, depicting the Yashoda and Krishna concept of Ravi Varma, but in a different style. Ravi Verma's realistic paintings were so famous that it even served as a promotion for the famous Kerala sandal soap produced by the then Kerala Soap Institute in Calicut, which in those years supplied soaps to famous dignitaries, including the Viceroy in its heydays. This is a painting which was adapted by the famous uh, Indian Dada Sahib Palke, the father of the Indian cinema, for his film uh, uh, Setu Bandhan in 1931. And here I reproduce some of his images, Ravi Verma's painting images, which were used as covers and ads for various household products from soaps to oils, to batteries, to even safety matches, not just in India, but also in faraway Japan, Sweden, UK, and even Austria. Sensing a hunger for Puranic pictures, he started spending endless hours studying the Puranas by engaging pundits and made sketches hours on end. It was a communication from the old friend Sir Madhav Rao, who suggested that he select a few works and send them to Europe to get them oleographed or lithographed. And uh, he said, I quote, 
you will not only extend your reputation, but will be doing real service to the country. This dramatically changed Ravi Verma's mindset about art. Lithography, as you know, uh, works based on the mutual repulsion of oil and uh, water. It originally uses an image drawn with oil, fat, or wax onto the surface of a smooth level lithographic limestone plate. The stone is then treated with mixture of acid and uh, gum arabic, uh, etching the portions of the stone that were not protected by the grease-based image. And when the stone is subsequently moistened, these etched areas, uh, they retain the water. An oil-based ink could then be applied and uh, that would be repelled by the water, which will stick only to the original drawing. The ink would finally be transferred to a blank paper sheet, producing a printed page. Now, at the end of the 19th century, this method became less popular in Europe, but started becoming popular in India. Ravi Verma started a press in Ghatkopar, Bombay in 1894. But the press was shifted to Malavali near Donavala, Maharashtra in 1899, from where thousands of oleographs and lithographs were produced. Later, the press was sold to his printing technician from Germany, Mr. Schleiser, in 1901. Unfortunately, the press was destroyed in a fire and it closed down after a few years. I'm just showing this uh, uh, process to you just to show you how, you know, multicolored printing where, you know, for example, uh, A and B are single color impression proofs, it becomes C, and then uh, uh, it results to one of the, uh, you know, by superimposing C and D leads to E, E is superimposed. So it's a fairly long and cumbersome process to eventually give you uh, uh, on the right uh, lower extreme, the now, among the most prominent lithographs are these three, which one would find in probably any South Indian home. Uh, besides Goddess Lakshmi and Saraswati, uh, Srimad Adi Shankara, which is uh, with his four primary disciples, uh, are something that you can find anywhere in most of the homes in South India. From the late 1890s, Ravi Verma lived in Bombay, having established his press. He then shifted the press to Malavali near Lonavala, which was a hill resort, and he spent only three months a year in Travancore. His uh, doctors advised him rest because he was suffering from diabetes and also a severe asthma, uh, asthma. And he actually sold the press to the German technician whom I mentioned for about 25,000 rupees. And unfortunately, diabetes worsened and he breathed this last on October 2nd, 1906 afternoon, almost some about 114 years ago to the day. Now in closing, I wish to present a couplet from the ancient Hindu text, Vishnu Dharmotara, which is uh, encyclopedic in nature, talks about almost everything as a narrative on subjects right from cosmology to cuisine, and part three of the Vishnu Dharmotara deals with art. And that section descri describes what is a perfect visual art. And it says, Rupa Bedam, which is an ability to display the variances among the different humans, natural and man-made objects, which is the subject matter of painting. Pramanani, which is the correct spatial perception of the objects painted. Bhava, the ability to express the inner feelings of the subject, lavanya yojanam, which is enhancing the painting by creating grace, beauty, charm, and tenderness, sadurshyam, which is achieving credible resemblance to the objects of the world around and to the persons, varnika banga, which is the artistic manner of improvising color combination, tones, and shades by the skillful use of brushes and other aids. Iti, Chitra, Sadangaka, meaning the six parts of good art. Personally, I feel Raja Ravi Verma's paintings embodied every principle of this. 
Finally, I wish to end this session with an extract from his biography. And the author writes about Raja Ravi Verma, and I quote, he is never proud of the name he has made, but admits that the more his knowledge increases, he comes to realize how little he knows of the great secrets of nature which lie hidden, unquote. They say that a sign of a genuine leader is someone who has a strong professional will to follow his passion, coupled with a high sense of personal humility despite great achievements. I think Raja Ravi Verma was one such person because he tore away from the comfortable confines of a royal life to pursue his ambition to become an artist and yet was humble enough to realize that art should not be just up there only for the rich and the elite, but should also enter every small household and be within the reach of a common man. Friends, thank you very much. With that, I close. Thank you, Bala. That was wonderful. I mean, really enjoyed. I had learned something, I mean, so many things, in fact. <laughs> very nice. Thank you very much. Sorry, I have kind of a couple of minutes crossed the 30 minutes, but I couldn't uh, bring it down any. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it was just my I have listened to more. Lovely, Bala. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Totally enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Muttaraman. I think, but for you, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to speak to uh, people like you. I certainly regard you uh, as someone who is a patron of what I am doing, although you haven't mentioned it. But thank you so much for this opportunity. And Shibu, wonderful for this uh, professional arrangement. I don't know if you guys would allow me to stay back to hear. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, you should stay. You should oh, stay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Bala, for your uh, coming, accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. We would it's like to hear more. Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure, sure. It's lovely. Like, so, like them, if you can, you can give uh, talk about Jamini Rai paintings or the Bengal School of Paintings. Okay, we'll try and do that. Thank you. Very good. There's a small piece on creativity and art, which uh, Mr. Mutraman knows. Uh, we can talk about it sometime when there is an opportunity. So Thank is, you. Is that Lovely. painting by, of uh, Ravi Verma, uh, which you showed initially, is that a uh, self portrait? Uh, by him? Or yes. is that? Uh, that is a self portrait. Yes, that's yeah. a self portrait. Self portrait. Okay. Shibu. Okay. Tell me. Sir. I requested Bala to go to Jamshedpur to take a session, one day session on art and leadership. Mm -hmm. And one day I think we should listen to him on that subject. And we love him. Yes. yes, that would be a good idea. Yes, yes. <laughs> is it, a, is any it other also, comments? Is Anything it also else? for the ladies? Leadership? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. We only follow you people. <laughs> All of us have the permission of our wives to say so, so no problem. Cracking jokes. That is the habit of men. We will never die. <laughs> About women. Dave, Dave, you have anything to say? We have Dave joining us too today. Thank you. It was a lovely session and I really enjoyed it. Very enriching. And uh, just a small nugget of information. Sir T. Madhva Rao was also the Diwan of Indore State. Yes, yes, yes. Very in true. fact, uh, in the 1870s, I think, and uh, Sir uh, Tukoji Rao Holkar II had him as the Diwan, and he was primarily responsible for bringing, making Indore a modern state. The medical college, the railways, so, it was a wonderful uh, connection between Travancore from where my parents come and uh, <laughs> Indore where we are settled, Sir T. Madhva Rao. And uh, I, would, I would definitely love it if you could one day uh, conduct the same thing for an audience in Indore. It would be oh, really nice. Looking at that, looking at that. I'll request you, Kema and Shibu to put you together. together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really enriching. Thank What's you. What's your favorite painting out of all of works? Which is your favorite? Well, I don't know if you can see uh, at the back, right on the wall, I'm actually sitting in my daughter's room. There is a painting that there comes yeah, I mean, Papa. Yeah, I noticed it. <laughs> there comes Papa. And I have one which is called, which I didn't show. It's called Kadambari. Uh, you should really see that. 
Kadambari is phenomenal. It is absolutely wonderful. What is the title of the one which there is a woman with a veena? You see, the problem with Ravi Verma, you see, the, the, the basic issue with Indian art is that it is not very well documented. Uh, the, the one with the veena that you saw is, is actually the, the name that is given as per the records is veena player. But uh, it goes by several names. For example, the Maharashtrian lady is called uh, a Nair beauty in some places. So unfortunately, it is not properly recorded. Indian artists and their works have not been recorded as much as uh, what the Europeans have done so well. But Kadambari, you should see, because this is something that you can Google. It's a great art to spend and see, you know, the foldings of the sari, the way she is holding the sitar, uh, the jewelry on her uh, neck, uh, remarkable. Anyway, uh, let me not bore you. Yeah, thank you for highlighting so many interesting things. But I think we have to move on now. And uh, because of this Kerala connection, Hema thought she'll present something from Kerala. So we have Sopana Sangeetam. And you mean Kerala connection is new to our boys? Shibu, if you don't mind. Who said that? Mutusha said that. Yes. Yes, 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 tell me, Bal. Chibu, if, would it be okay if I pulled up my wife who is downstairs? Please, please, call her. Please, call her. please call her. The more the merrier. I'll just, uh, uh, okay, I'll just, we'll just wait for him then. And uh, we, just for the information of others, Mutusar was about to name the layout, rename the layout, Mallu's by the lake. <laughs> this is <it's laughs> frustrated with the amount of Malayalis who are like pouring into the layout. <laughs> oh, I think uh, he's come back. So, uh, shall I share the screen then? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, Sopana Samgidam uh, means. Um, so uh, sopanam is actually the uh, steps leading into the leading to the sanctum sanctorum of a temple and these are the songs uh, which are sung at that place and so therefore you know you can say that the songs from the temple steps it is basically sung uh, as an offering to the deity um, it's basically a folk art it uh, originated somewhere in the 10th century that's when it started and like i said you know it's sung at the temple steps it is, a, uh, you know, it's, it was associated with a certain caste, which is the Maharaj, which are the Ambalavasis in Kerala. They are the caretakers of the temple. The Nambudiris are the ones who offer prayers, but Maharaj and uh, warriors are the ones who are responsible for the upkeep of the temple. And also, uh, you know, uh, in this instance, the four castes associated with temple premises. It's, uh, it's uh, generally sung uh, with very minimal accompaniment. One is an edakya, which is a percussion instrument in the shape of a damru and hourglass. And uh, uh, the, uh, also uh, chimila, that is another, it's a small little uh, brass, uh, you know, plate on which you strike with a stick. So basically there is simplicity in it. Most of it is in the singing and the bhava is there. So this is the Adakya and you can see these two gentlemen uh, standing in front of the temple steps and singing the songs. I'll just play a little snippet for you guys now. Shibu, can you hear? No, did you click on that later? Okay. In the screen share, did you click on that? Uh, yeah, computer audio. Oh, so I'll just uh, screen share again, one minute. Yeah. Yeah, I did. 
Yeah. ಕಂಸಾರಿರಿ ಸಂಸಾರವಾಸನಾಬದ್ಧಶೃಂಖಲ ಕಂಸಾರಿರಿ ಸಂಸಾರವಾಸನಾಬದ್ಧ ಶೃಂಖಲ ವ್ರಜ ಸುಂದರಿ ಮಾಮಿಯ ಚಲಿತ ವಿಲೋಕ್ಯ ವೃದ ವಧು ನಿಚಯ ಸಾಪರಾತಯ ಮಯ ವಿನ ವಾರಿದಿ ಭಯನ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಅತ ದರತಯ ಸಾಗತ ಗುಪಿತೇನ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಕತ ದರತಯ that was a sample uh, you can hear my voice now right yes uh this these songs were sung in the language the an old medieval language called manipravalam which was a sort of somewhere between sanskrit and malayalam so although malayalis can understand these songs sometimes you are you don't clearly understand all the lyrics because it is not actually malayalam so bana sangeetam is generally of two kinds largely one is kotti paadi seva kotti is percussion paadi is song and seva is this is the offering that you're giving to the lord and the other could be ranga sopanam now ranga sopanam is the musical accompaniment to a performing art say like a kudi atam krishna natam uh, mohini atam and kathakali so there also you have the same form of singing it starts off with a kirtanam which is uh, praise to the reigning deity of the temple since it's sang on a temple steps the lord within or the goddess within is praised and then it moves on to ashtapati ashtapati is a um, uh, 12th century sanskrit text written by jayadeva uh, the eight stanzas in geeta govindam which basically deals with uh, the radha krishna divine romance so most of the um, sahityam in sobana sangeetam is coming from ashtapadi it operates within a very limited range of ragas it's not as extensive as carnatic it takes from the carnatic ragas but a uh, very few of them limited number but some of the very common ones like uh, kalyani um, uh, the uh, todi uh, karhar priya uh, you know some of the uh, kedara gaula Uh, all these uh, ragas you will get to hear in sobana sangeetam it starts slowly and then ascends and sessions you know climbs up just like how you would be climbing up the steps of the sanctorum towards the lord uh, and the time is also very peculiar uh, in these temples what happens is at the time of the baradhana uh, that is the offering of the uh, lamps to the lord they close the temple doors and every and inside the pujari will be uh, uh, you know he'll be doing the alankaram lighting up the lamps and the people outside cannot see what's going on so they are all basically standing outside and waiting for the sanctum to open and people you know their minds will be wandering have i switched off the gas what do i cook for breakfast tomorrow so this was a technique devised to keep the devotees mind focused on the lord you know uh, because they can't see the devotee because but they can hear this beautiful song and they will uh you know sing along with it or enjoy that mood um, now uh as in most things you know for uh, us to get popular appeal you know there will be something that 
some of these folk and art it comes into popular culture through movies and uh, that's how com common public like us are made aware of it now that's uh, i i just wanted to share with you uh, how i came to know about sobana sangeetam is through one of these movies devasuram uh, it's uh, hands down one of my favorite movies not just malayalam movies my favorite movies so uh, devasuram uh, it's a combination of the deva and the asuram uh, it's played by mohanlal it is a brilliant story uh, which is written by a very young screen uh, screen writer at that time ranjit ranjit is now a very accomplished director he even makes cameo roles in movies but at that time he was a young guy who wrote the story which is actually based on a true uh, character in uh, north malabar uh, and he had the good fortune that a stalwart director like iv shashi took on the project and directed this brilliant movie the character uh, that uh, mohanlal plays in this is neelagantan who's part deva part asuram once a hero but now fallen and defeated defeated by the uh, you know the gunda who beats him black and blue uh, by the rogue uh, villain in the movie and he's lying there all fallen and his childhood friend uh, who's actually a sobana sangeetam singer comes and visits him and cannot bear to see him in the state so he says i have nothing to give you but leftovers from my offering at the nava mugundam temple at tirunavaya and uh, this character is played by oduvil unnikrishnan who is actually originally a play you know a, a drama artist uh, he's done a brilliant job and uh, very well supported by both mohanlal and revathi and you can see their different moods as he sings this sopana sangeetam and i will play that for you now nena sedikku vala kekkum hey ഇങ്ങോട്ട് കാണട്ടെ ഇവിടുത്തെ വിശേഷങ്ങളൊക്കെ അറിഞ്ഞില്ലേ വയ്യ അങ്ങോട്ട് വന്ന ആ കിടപ്പ് കാണാൻ എനിക്ക് വയ്യ മനസ്സില് ദൈവങ്ങൾക്കൊപ്പം കൊണ്ടു നടക്കുന്ന ചിത്രമുണ്ട് അത് അങ്ങനെ നിന്നോട്ടെ കിടന്നു പോയി എന്ന് ഞാൻ വിശ്വസിക്കില്ലടോ പെരിങ്ങോടാ തനിക്ക് തരാൻ തന്നോട് പറയാൻ എന്റേൽ ഒന്നുമില്ലടോ നീലകണ്ട നാവാമുകുന്ദന് കൊടുത്തേന്റെ ബാക്കി ഇത്തിരി നിവേദ്യമുണ്ട് അത് എന്നാ സ്വീകരിക്കുക വന്ദേ മുകുന്ദേ ജയ ശൗരി സന്താപകാരി മുരാരെ ദ്വാപര ചന്ദ്രിക ചർച്ചിതമാം നിന്റെ ദ്വാരക പുരിയവിടെ പീലിത്തിളക്കവും കോലക്കുഴൽ പാട്ടും എവിടെ ക്രൂരനിഷാദ ശരം കൊണ്ടു നീറുമി നെഞ്ചിലെന്നാത്മപ്രണ പ്രേമസ്വരൂപന സ്നേഹസദീർഘന്റെ കാൽക്കലൻ കണ്ണീർപ്രണ that was a scene from devasuram mm, i hope you all enjoyed that uh, now uh, could you figure out where, i mean uh, where did this text come from it does it sound like it is from ashtapati uh, so where is this uh, sahityam come from now you would be forgiven to think that this was actually a sopana sangeetam but the fact is it was not it was not sopana sangeetam these are the creators of this song so this the lyrics were written by uh, this very accomplished poet actually a film song film lyricist but 
he has write, written some really good poetry girish putanjeri and he uh, some of some of the really good malayalam songs the uh, lyrics are very poetic and he unfortunately died very young at 48 he is the one who wrote the lyrics uh, to suit the movie and he wanted to uh, you know create it in along the lines of a sobana sangeetam and he uh, wrote the song and uh, it fit the scene the story of the movie the character neelakanthan and then he wanted somebody to sing it but it had to be the voice which could fit in with the sobana sangeetam and none of the uh, singers at that time he felt would do it justice so he went to mg radhakrishnan who is actually not a singer he is a music director very accomplished music director so he requested mg radhakrishnan to sing this song that is why the voice is not like that of a regular playback singer so actually this is not a sobana sangeetam but you know most people thought that it was so uh so just for the you know benefit of the everybody else i just wanted to um this is the uh, meaning of the lyrics and i will just sing it i'll be not half as good as what you heard but just make an effort here mm. so i'm going to put the laser pointer on to the lyrics where i sing it so you will understand vande <laughs> mukund hari जय शौरे चंदा बहारी मुरारे द्वापर चंद्रिका चर्चे दमा मिंदे द्वारका पूरे विडे तीलि तिलकवम कोलकुळल पाटुम अंबाडे पैये कळु ूरनिषाद शरम कुंदूनीजिलिन्नात्म प्रणाम प्रेम स्वूपमाह सधीर्ते काल कलिल कन्नीर प्रणाम these are the resources the youtube videos i can share it on the group so that uh, you all can see it later lovely beautiful and very nice very good very good yeah. so i got uh, when i watched uh, obviously i love the movie and i actually thought it's a sobana sangeetam and then i was wondering there is no radha there is no krishna there there is a fallen hero Uh, and it so perfectly suits the movie so then i start began wondering maybe it's not an original sobana sangeetha dug up about it and then all this comes out that it is actually girish putanjeri's creation i remember you sharing it with me sometime back yeah yeah one of my favorites yeah beautiful thank you hema that was uh, very 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 nice it took me back almost 50 years Twenty years of my life, uh, my parents used to sing Kalyanam at home. Uh, Radha Kalyanam would happen every eighteen weeks because uh, the eighteen Ashtapadis uh, each week one Ashtapadi would be sung, and when the eighteenth are completed, they would call a Bhagwat at home, and that could be somebody from uh, Alangudi, for example, where uh, Alangudi's uh, uh, Nama Sankirtanam and the Radha like uh, next to heaven. and uh, and it's something that also when you said ashtapati it was it brought me back too many memories so thank you for doing so that. somebody would sing the ashtapati we would all sing i, I don't know whether i'll remember most of them but uh, i you think you can give I, it a shot you can give it a shot of course pralap payodi hare starting from the first one to some of my favorites uh, we will we will do this uh, ashtapati scene uh, maybe one of these days Sounds so good. The, and that is the reason for uh, the you know the the big painting there, which has all the whole Krishna yeah. Lila yeah, at Krishna home. Yeah, Krishna Lila. I think it 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 was uh, it would, this was incidentally picked up in Kerala only. The oh, whole Krishna Lila is on one painting, and it was kind of I don't know whether even I'm in uh, Patichitra you you get it in the mural paintings also in Orissa. The Patichitras have the whole uh, Rasa Lila. 
Yeah, Shibu, my favorite used to be something called Lalita Lavanga Lata Pari Shilana. Yes, yes. yes. I was going to say that. And uh, some of these, uh, if you, if, uh, if there are some videos of um, um, in Odyssey dance, uh, Keruchiran Mahapatras. You know, he, uh, he performs on that. He used to, and he's not a very good looking man. Very no. good looking <laughs> And, but when you watch him doing those Ashtapadis, you feel that there can be no uh, more of a beauty than him actually by performing. So I would suggest that you know you should, whenever you get a chance, do watch him on YouTube. Amazing, amazing work. Tell me, did everybody understand the whole uh, the about the movie scene? Did it make sense? Yes. Or have, has anybody no, no. seen it? Perfectly, perfectly understood. Actually, I think anybody... I watched the movie now. <laughs> Have, have any of you seen the movie Devasura? No. <laughs> Rani has seen. Obviously, she's living with Prasad. There's no way she would have not seen. And nobody else. Okay. It's there on YouTube. It is a very, it's a very beautiful movie. Um, and uh, the, the whole Devasura is a cult status in Malayalam uh, movie. And uh, um, recently, you know, Prithvi Raj is one of the uh, popular actors now. He, uh, you know, he tried to recreate it. Uh, along with, uh, you know, so when he was acting, he was, he took on Mohanlal's role uh, based on the story of Devasuram. In this, he plays a police inspector who's a little bit crooked, uh, his character. And strangely, the uh, director of that movie was Ranjit. Ranjit, who has now grown up and become famous, he decided to direct it. And let me tell you, flopsy, flopsy, flop. You cannot compare it with Devasura. And he himself says it, like we were aiming very high. Nobody, nothing can touch the marvel of Devasura. I can post the link of that also, some of you, you know, you can check it out. to do Mohanlal in any case. Sorry, Danny? It's tough to do a Mohanlal. Oh yeah, absolutely. In his hair days, now of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. By the way, uh, so did you notice any difference in the quality of the audio of the music she was playing? It was good. So, oh, was it? It was better, very right? Good. Today so it was very good. When you, I so when you, I think the trick know, is when you share your audio you have while sharing the screen you have to there at the bottom of the screen there is share with computer audio so you need to click on that so then the music comes through the computer and is directly sent into the other people's uh, Shibu, you can share your screen and show where it is supposed to be clicked maybe you can because we just we've sat and figured it out previously when we were showing audio it was very poor quality audio so this time i think we've cracked it the first sobhani sankirtan was it heard properly jinish Yes. Yeah. 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 Very clear. Wasn't it beautiful? Young lad. That guy is a very young lad. He's just started singing. Uh, I don't even know if his uh, dad was a, uh, you know. So most of these singers, they are all hereditary, you know. Uh, it's like uh, from father to son, uh, it's been taught and they continued. Even in South Indian temples, no. Chennai, Tamil Nadu temples, there are Oduas. You must hear them. Yeah. Amazing voice, amazing singing. Yeah, so there is the most of there are multiple ones. But because it is sung just before Lord is going to retire. Without that, nothing is complete. They sit stand and no, they won't sit. They don't have any accompaniments, only the like a percussion <laughs> instrument. Amazing singing for one hour. All the nine months. All the Tiruvachakam, Devaram, everything is sung bit by bit every day, one hour. Yeah. But nobody will be standing there because everybody sees the Lord and goes away because she's a slow I have seen it as a child. Now, whether the tradition is still on or not, I have no idea. It is there. Even in Delhi, in some of the temples, they do have it during festivals. You time. must hear their voice. You will never believe they have never learned. It comes from family, actually. The son learns, the grandson learns it like that. Fantastic voice. Fantastic mm -hmm. singing. I think it was they, the... they don't even look into any book. Yeah. Continues like it comes, flows. Like a family training kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
some of these uh, songs which are very basic no with very little music they sound so beautiful in the setting of the temple just uh, remarkable how it feels okay guys i think we are uh, crossed our time limit so good night thank you bala thank you hema thank, thank you hello nice good night thank you lot thank you thanks for joining me i think having uh, mr balachandran also was was absolutely cool Super. absolutely very nice yeah. very nice Lovely. very nice i mean one of our favorite it's a favorite painting uh, ravi varma i have uh, in my house i bought a, a big book of uh, you know for like uh, 500 rupees it had uh, <laughs> like uh, some eight or uh, eight paintings per book so i had 16 of them I and i got it framed Bombay. Museum and hang it everywhere. Look, then what on drinks of Raja Ravi Verma? Ah, yeah. Yeah. You'd, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever you get a chance to go to Kerala, hmm. get this publication. It is written by a gentleman called Venniyur, published okay. by the government of Kerala way back in 1981. Okay. This is one of the most authentic references of Raja uh, Ravi. Venni or is it? Uh, uh, Mrs. Hema Nair, uh, we certainly appreciated your uh, because my wife is part of a large Ashtapati group and uh, they have. Uh, uh, by the way, she is Sandhya, my wife. Sandhya, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. And uh, she was talking about one of the famous uh, Ashtapati that she sees is Tarushi Lake, and incidentally, she has seen the movie Devasuram. <laughs> very nice to meet you very nice that you could participate thank you thank you everybody thank you. Bye. all right bye bye good night good night, good night. Good night.